You're listening to Chugging Bleach, the only podcast where the bounce count. Hello and welcome <laughs> to Chugging Bleach. Wait a second, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> the only Bleach podcast on the Gigaboots Podcast Network, hosted by Bob Video Games. Bob, take it away. <laughs> this is, of course, the Bleach Podcast, as you just heard, where we cover all the animated Bleach. But we do. And various cleaning products. <laughs> I'm your host, and uh, with me, as usual, our damn video games. Hey, remember when people used to yell Bunkai and cool stuff would happen? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Agro. <laughs> uh, you'll be shocked to death. And Chris Wolfhart. I wonder if there'll be a group we'll never hear about again in this episode. Um... Mm, um like the Fractiones. <laughs> I th- I'm pretty sure we're going we're to hear about them again. Well, they're going to be there. I don't know if anybody's ever going to say it again. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> this time we covered up to 210 to 214. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, it's going to feel like so many. It's so many. Ooh. I bet a lot happened. Absolutely. <laughs> when does it not happen? When does a lot not happen in Bleach? <laughs> like, does it, it being any progression of story at all, not happen in Bleach? <laughs> but before we talk about Bleach, we gotta talk about the Patreon. How it lets you hear about Bleach early. If you'd like to get this episode early, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcast. For as little as $5 a month, you get access to many benefits. But most relevant in this case is early access to this show, one month early. If you're listening to this on YouTube, there's another episode almost certainly waiting for you on the Patreon. I'm sure you're so excited. That's uh, patreon.com slash Podcast. Great. Now we can talk about Bleach. <laughs> episode 210. Can you tell me what happened? Sure. Uh, first of all, we're back to the 20% of the episode recaps. Yay. So Kensei got stabbed by Tosin. He turns around and looks at him, but we don't get to see that he got stabbed by Tosin. Emergency captain's meeting. All the captains <laughs> have to go. They lost the signal on Kensei and Mashiro, which is a big problem, and they announced this over criers. Don't they have the butterflies? They do. Maybe they don't have but- them Butterflies yet. are slow. Uh, Urhar is sleeping and wakes up and is worried about Hiori. Hiori runs through the forest and curses all this dumb research shit. She senses something and stops at his glowing eyes in the darkness. Captain's meeting. <laughs> Yamamoto says a captain and a lieutenant disappeared, so now, now this is DEFCON 5. He's dispatching five captains to resolve it. Urahara shows up late. He volunteers to be one of the captains, and Yamato says, fucking no, you're emotionally invested, that's bad. And he goes, Mahiori! And then Yoruichi calls him a sexist for not respecting her agency and ability. Instead, they're going to send Shinji, Rose, and Love. Uh, Unohana wants to go, but Yamamoto says, no, you're the doctor. You can't go to ground zero of what might be an epidemic. That seems like a bad move. (laughs) Yeah, and just that it's so funny. He's just like, let me call out the names for everyone you know becomes uh, like a visor. A visor. <laughs> yeah. That's not, they really know when it's like, we're sending the two heads of the Keto Corps, a group I don't believe is ever mentioned again. Well, yeah, the two heads are lo- lost here. So it's good. The whole th- the whore just disappears. The, and the two heads are, are Tessai and, uh, and Hotchigan. Hachi, and as you know, Soul Society really respects the sanctity of the person who held a role. They will not simply replace anyone. <laughs> What, what did this arc begin with again? <laughs> Kyoraku is like, sending both big wigs from the Keto Corps is a bad idea, so send my lieutenant instead, who is, of course, Lisa. They have a conversation about her being a pervert again because she was, she was eavesdropping on the captain's meeting. It was very funny. She just pops her head up through a window like she's a puppet on a fucking children's show. <laughs> she becomes Kyle McLaughlin in the, <laughs> in the closet in blue velvet. <laughs> Literally every visor will now be there. Gee, I wonder what's going to happen. It's a mystery. No one can figure it out. We can't just end the recap now. Oh my god, that would have been so good. It would have. No, we have a bunch more episodes of this shit to go through. Uh, Kyoraku tells her hard to stop worrying because Hiori will be fine. Oh, he's fucking wrong. (laughs) (laughs) She is not fine and is being attacked by something. Shinji shows up and saves her and he's like, why aren't you fighting it? And that's because she's not fighting it 
because it's holified Kensei. Urahara sits at his desk at night fretting. Someone shows up and says she's going home. She has a chain on her head. This girl actually is a real character. She appeared briefly in the manga way back in Soul Society. The only time we have seen her in the actual anime is in a group shot of Squad 12 in the stupid fucking cake episode. Wow. Really? But she is like fourth or fifth seat back in the research division. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> yeah. Like that chain thing is something is something Kubo designed. Like that her weird chain hair. I mean, she looked so on brand that I didn't doubt that, but it was also like, who the fuck is this? Other than best dress, and I'll kill any of you if you take it before me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got a picture of her in the manga. Her name is Nico Kuna. Her name is Better Be in one of the fighting games. <laughs> I don't think so, Dan. Uh, she was seen in this one panel when they are when the research divisions are taking off Rookie as Gee Guy after she is arrested. Incredible. Wow. I love this character. The Thousand Year Blood War better fucking hinge as an entire thing around <laughs> this character. <laughs> anyway, uh, where were we? Okay, Urahar makes some fucking lean in a beaker and it fades from that <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Love Rose and Lisa show up to where Shinji and Hiori are. They they see all see that it's Kensei and they start to fight and Love gets punched and it makes a big explosion and Rose has a really fucking horribly delivered line where he goes, Love, no! It was pretty funny. They do the, he's our friend, so we'll just beat him up a little spiel and Rose and Lisa start fighting him. Then Mashiro shows up also holified and Axe kicks Rose through the planet. It's pretty great. It is pretty great. <laughs> she attacks Shinji and it blocks. This flashback is really frustrating because Kubo obviously doesn't want to blow the reveal of their abilities on this flashback. So instead, they can't do anything. Yeah. It was... Even though these are fucking captains and lieutenants who should all have huge fucking dicks. Yeah, they don't even sh use Shikai. Like, they can't even do that. Yeah, the only character that uses Shikai is, uh, is Kensei because we've seen his already. Mm-hmm. Look, they were already hypnotized by Aizen to forget that they could do shit. <laughs> Hachigen shows up and seals Mashiro in the big pole keto he used on Ichigo. Love and Kensei continue to fight. Uh, Hachigen heals, seals Kensei with a keto and he falls out of the sky, but he breaks out real fast and Hachigen is stunned. We cut to Urahara sneaking around in his Organization 13 cloak. Straight up. Yeah. P pretty unambiguous. Even has the same features. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tessay catches him and is impressed the cloak stops spiritual pressure. Tessay and Urahara have some history from hanging out with Yoruichi. It seems like Tessay is going to stop him, but he actually wants to go with him. Substitute Soul Reaper work journal. They have allies in the living world. Urahara sells them a hollow detector that looks like an iPod. Ichigo has to work it off at the store. Episode 211. Four minute recap again. Mm. Kyoraku talks to some NPCs and sees Aizen. He then meets tiny baby Nanao. He says he remembers the name of every girl he meets because he's a creep. <laughs> he's a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Nanao wants to see Lisa, but Lisa is busy being beaten up by Kensei. <laughs> a full-time job <laughs> yeah kensei is going on a rampage and everybody's trying to deal with him he's rinsing everybody because they're not allowed to use their powers due to plot contrivance <laughs> yeah. they come I, up with a plan it's it's so frustrating i i, I had the thought of like maybe because it's 100 years ago they don't know what shikai is yet <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I, I, but other characters use their shikais and Bonkai's in this. No. Our Tosin. <laughs> no. Anyway, they come up with a plan to have Hachigen hit him with a big Bakudo to subdue him. It's Bakudo 99, Kin. They subdue him, but after Hiori starts holifying, and then they all get put into Tosin's Bonkai, love gets cut, and then we learn that the masked guy is indeed Tosin. <gasps> and uh, Shinji's like, why did you betray your captain? And then Aizen shows up with Baby Gin, and he's like, Oh, you fool, you don't understand that he hasn't betrayed anyone because he was actually loyal to me the entire time. Yeah, he was loyal to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they shoot a gun that travels with a really slow bullet. <laughs> Shinji uses his cool line about the mother's room again on Aizen, but Aizen, but, but Aizen owned the shit out of you, man. You're cooked. You don't get to pretend that you knew shit. He owned the fuck out of you. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. so, it's so bad. I know, it's rough. Shinji says he always knew that Aizen was a dirtbag and made him his, his lieutenant to keep an eye on him. And then Aizen reveals uh, every single thing you thought I knew was hypnosis. My <gasps> hypnosis. You know, Aizen is really the anti-Jinkaria. 
because Jin Caria had lots and lots of plans that never worked because they were he's stupid and he's an idiot. Aizen doesn't ever have a plan. He just brute forces it with his me his god tier hypnosis power. It's so fucking funny that Kubo's like, "Here's my mastermind. If you ever looked at him, he can control all your senses." Yeah, it's the biggest <laughs> fraud in in history. Basically, he just yeah, have to cheat it. Like it's like, uh, I can construct a fake reality where you believe every single thing I want. Aren't you impressed? I tricked you. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of your one power. A lot of you thought I lost control of the vehicle, but I, in fact, wanted to slam my car to the side of this store and steal everything here. This was my <laughs> plan the whole time. Get, get shoplifting her. I mean, uh, I mean, baby geek. Right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to steal this hockey mask. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Aizen goes on a lot about how Shinji not trusting him gave Aizen an opening, and I don't see how any of that matters when you can fully hypnotize anybody who looked at your power ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a lot of... <laughs> yeah, you could just say that one thing, and we could end this here. No one needs anything else explained, because you, you have the catch-all. Yeah. Fucking who cares? End the conversation. Shinji tries to attack, but that was also Aizen's plan, and getting mad makes you hollow fi faster. Which was also Aizen's plan, and then the credits <laughs> roll, and that was Aizen's plan. This holification is the rage Bakudo shit. That fucking horrible filler arc really was just this flashback. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, God, that I'm gonna, sucks. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, mm. I'm gonna walk into the ocean. <laughs> oh my God, you did not just tie it to the filler thing being like, oh, well, when you get angry, you holify quicker. What if, what if this thing sapped your life energy and made you rage out? Oh my God. And you send both, it's like even framed the same with but like spreading and melting them. Oh my God. Uh, Shinji manages to control it a little and fight Tosin. Aizen taunts him some more as he melts and then Urahara and Tese show up. And that's the end of the episode. Substitute Shinigami work journal. Ruki explains that sometimes Ichigo lets other Soul Reapers use his room for meetings. The Soul Reapers Min Association is using it and Ichigo wants them to leave. <laughs> it's so sad. It is. <laughs> episode 212. Tessai and Urahara are there. Tosin wants to kill them, but Aizen gets real racist and shuts him down. <laughs> I was taking a drink. Oh, my God. <laughs> Urahara and Shinji talk a bit, and Urahara figures out the situation by looking at it because he's not a fucking idiot. <laughs> Aizen plays innocent for no reason. Aizen's just like, no, I swear they were all eating glue, and it's all over their faces now. <laughs> How gross. <laughs> they trip. <laughs> Urahara is like, oh, these ha these the disease are actually your holification experiments. Aizen tries to leave, and then Tessai, Tessai shoots a gigantic hato at him, but Aizen blocks it un, like completely nonchalantly while walking away without doing a chant or anything. The clashing spells nuke the area, and in the explosion, they all escape. You know, I kind of thought this flashback would be like Aizen at less than the most powerful character in existence. Yeah, that would make sense. Like, over the 100 years, he would become powerful, not he's already there. Yeah, especially considering everyone else is just not powerful inexplicably in this entire fight. Uh -huh. Look, just pretty soon they're going to invent Shikai, and then the, the whole thing will level up. It'll be fine. Just no one tell Kenpachi that we figured out how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> that could upset the global power. The holification of the visor starts getting worse. Tessay says he can teleport them all to Urahara's lab by using forbidden techniques. And it's like, please cover your eyes so you do not witness me using forbidden techniques. Yeah, it was time stop and teleport, which is cool as shit. Yep. Didn't someone near the end of that, that last arc, the, the, the Ruricio arc, have teleport. a teleport? Yes, they did. Okay. Yes, I'm a guy teleported. Yes. Stop it! <laughs> stop it! <laughs> 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 Ur Urahara says he can fix them with this stuff he made. It's the Hogyoku. He spends all night trying to fix them, and it seems like it doesn't work. He goes outside to get some air and is arrested on orders of the Central 46. Aizen framed him for everything. Um, They, they, they aren't even interested in talking to the victims. They're just like, no, we're going to kill all of them because they're abominations now. <laughs> some people, some guy saw Aizen, so he must be innocent. Uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. I'm I just I'm so glad they're in this flashback so I can have one more moment to go. I'm glad he killed you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fuck <laughs> you. You guys suck. That that does seem to be the point of these. Anytime we see them, <laughs> I told I told Bob the funniest thing that we could do while watching Bleach is watch this arc. 
this little flashback arc and then start from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, no, that would be real funny. I don't think anything would line up right. They would just be like, what the fuck's with this show? Like, they would be more confused than a person actually watching through as the show is like, uh, car town can fuck itself. We're going to spend forever in Soul Society now. Uh, so Yoruichi bursts in and takes everybody before they can be punic- executed. And Urhar was going to be exiled. I, I wondered why ex- being exiled was a bad punishment. But they specifically say, we're going to seal your spiritual pressure so you just would get killed instantly by a hollow. You'd basically just be a minus. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Urhar is going to give them his new experimental gi guy and says he'll find a way to fix all of this no matter how long it takes. Then we cut back to the present with Soul Society and the RN car staring at each other, and we see that Shinji and the Visors are going to go out and join the fight. The next episode is filler. I... I... It kills me so much that he says that. And then they're like, yeah, you fixed like the visors, but you didn't seemingly do anything to expose Aizen. You just let that fester <laughs> right? for a hundred years. I mean, he, he knows how it goes in Soul Society. <laughs> do you think do you think that Yam because Yamamoto apparently worked with him to get people into to to uh Quaco Mundo? Do you think Yamamoto was like, oh sorry, that was my bad? <laughs> Or do you think he was like, that wasn't my choice. That was Central 46. They're all dead now. Let bygones be bygones. It's probably that one. I don't think that Yamamoto would ever fess up to anything. Do you, do you, no. think, that, do you think that Urahara learned that, that Aizen killed the Central 46 and just was like, fuck you, good. You motherfuckers. What I love about that is like, Yoruichi shows up, immediately rinses the guards in the chamber, and they just, they don't up security at all, I guess. <laughs> Well, it's hard to up security against a guy who can control all your senses. <laughs> it's fucking Eisen. In, in retrospect, it's so insane how Eisen's scheme is like, when I joined the lieutenants, I was so, I, I told everybody, hey, look at this, and everyone did. <laughs> <laughs> I am a criminal genius. It's just Eisen making a circle with his thumb and forefinger below the waist. Right. He got that in the way he says Bonkai. Bonkai. Holy shit. Substitute Soul Reaper work journal. Substitutes hold on to things for real Soul Reapers. Rinchi was keeping his gi guy there. Rukia spilt curry on it, and for some reason this meant Ishida had to put in an address. Hilarious. Thank you, Ishida. That tracks. Oh boy, time for filler. Oh, uh, wait, that tracks. Okay, Agro, I show up to Big Think in a dress and I go, I spilled chili on my jeans. You will go, I will question this no further. <laughs> this, If you show up in like a toast size dress, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One moment. <laughs> Episode 213, this is what happened while Ichigo was in Hueco Mundo. Oh boy. Cone is sleeping. Urahara shows up and kidnaps him. He has to be a Power Ranger. By the way, this we're in filler mode, so fuck this story. Uh, he has to be a Power Ranger in Ichiko's body while Ichigo is gone to protect Karakura Town from Hollows. Kone doesn't want to. Urahara says he'll look cool to girls if he does it and successfully manipulates him into doing it. A Hollow shows up and Urahara has Tesse like throw Kone into orbit from the shop basement to go intercept it. The hollow is a giant, weird-looking, like, doodle monster. It is. Yeah, no, th- th- this is actually kind of good. <laughs> yeah, he, he is some teen girl squad shit. <laughs> I'm absolutely fucked up by how much I enjoyed this more than any of the episodes we watched recently. <laughs> yeah, the, that, that past stuff was dire. <laughs> it, it's menacing a plus that is an older woman. Cone emerges from the sewer and hits the hollow on the head. Tessai runs and saves the bystander. Urahara and Ururu watch on TV at home as Cone call, does the call uh, career change to become Kanso Cop Kakarizer, which uh, looks like a gotcha man. Karakurizer. Because Karakurizer. It's like, because it's like Karakura, but riser. Yes. Instead mm-hmm. of, it's, for some reason, this really works for me, this little two-parter here. It's very funny, and I appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, Ichigo's classmates get pulled in, and they're just terrible at this. <laughs> K- Kone hates it, and Urahara says that she designed the outfit. Kone does a stupid pose, and everybody is embarrassed. We flash back to Urahara, telling him if he doesn't do the pose, he will explode. <laughs> Kone leaps into battle and gives a big speech about how the suit makes him stronger, and Urahara comes in over the radio and is like, the suit doesn't do that. 
This <laughs> dude doesn't do anything, man. Cone kicks the hollow in the nose and it cries. It has laser tears. And Cone has to hide. Urahara tells him to use his riser beam, which requires him to do a bunch of poses and requires him to spell out riser beam with kanji. Like spell doing kanji poses with his body and eviscerates the hollow. Then more hollows show up and they're like pterodactyl bird things. It felt very, it felt very kaiju. Yeah. That looks, they look so much like the exact thing would be in a, in a Godzilla or uh Yeah, it was funny to switch from the really doodly goofy one to just that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like filler tier hollows. Uh-huh. He jumps up to fight them and calls out riser cape and Ashida appears in like a, a side panel to explain that the the riser cape is special because it has more pleats than a normal cape, but it has no special abilities. <laughs> this is really good. He's like, well, how is one and a half times as many pleats going to help me? And he's like, it's not. It looks better. Cone gets grabbed by the hollow, shaken a bit, dropped, and then like all the birds just start pecking him. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, he is saved by all the other Karakura Town's characters. Don Kanonji is Karakurizer spirit. Tatsuki is Karakurizer beast. Chizuru, the red-haired sex pest friend, is Karakurizer erotic. In Japanese, she gets a really va- she gives a really vague innuendo, but in English, she basically says, "I will suck evil's dick." <laughs> <laughs> Kago is Karakurizer delicate and had to be threatened to be here. And Aruru is Karakurizer tiny devil. I really like with the Karakurizer delicate. They're like, you have to do the pose or it'll explode. And he's like, oh no! And then he just barely shifts. And nothing happens. And he waits, and then a tiny explosion goes off, and he goes, ah! And then they just cut away from that moment. <laughs> yeah, I love that his costume is also just a t-shirt and some big gloves. <laughs> yeah, he looks like that uh, Sega superhero on the Saturn and Dreamcast. God, what was it? Rent a hero? He looks like mm. Rent a hero to me. And also, just let me pretend that Tatsuki was a real character for a little while. It, it was, was good. It was pretty great. Yeah, that's yeah. good. We all get to live the dream. <laughs> I'm living the dream right now. They beat up the hollows and save the day, but Afro Soul Reaper shows up defeated and they all feel spiritual pressure. It is an Aran Car bunny girl inside Shadow, inside a floating fortress that I am pretty sure is a Kaku Ranger reference. Uh, if not that, doesn't it also... Man, what is, what is the name of the thing? It shows up in Tatsunoko versus Capcom. Oh, is it uh, Yatterman? Yeah, it looked Yatterman core. It does look a little bit like that. Which the 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 lady also looked Yatterman core, if you ask me. But I, I just assumed it was Kaku Ranger because Kaku Ranger uh-huh. Karakurizer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I put the villain floating skull fortress from Kaku Ranger in the. <laughs> that's what image. that's from. Yep. In fact, that that is that is from the uh, that is from that in Power Rangers. That is the flying fortress of Master Vile. Rita Repulsa's father, <laughs> who and 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 her father is the villain of Kaku Ranger because they were still using Japanese footage. How did I just find this out? <laughs> How am I only now finding out about Rita Repulsa's dad? <laughs> oh yeah, her 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 younger brother, who is also a Kaku Ranger character, is in that season. He's Rito Repulsa. He's like a big skeleton <sighs> soldier man. He looks pretty cool, honestly. When when does this happen in Power Rangers? It is season three. Of, of original Mighty Morphin Power Jesus Rangers. Christ, I tapped out pretty fast if I didn't make it to season three, right? Well, season two is really bad. <laughs> season two is really bad because they didn't change the costumes and weren't used to making their own footage yet. So you have a lot of, White Ranger, you go fight the monster so that we can use footage from the show we're not really adapting. Everyone else will fight putties. Oh, uh, yeah. And that goes on for like 40 episodes. Wow. The Arankar Encyclopedia. Gin will explain the Garganta. They are teeth portals. Other than the bad guys, only Urahara sh- understands them. Mayuri shows up and wants Gin to show him a, di- of a diagram of an Arankar, and Gin is creeped out. Episode 214. Uh, instead of a recap, we get a common Rider reference where Kone is captured by Urahara and given surgery to become a Karakarizer. It's appreciated. Thank you for not bothering with recap. <laughs> we open on the skull... They're watching it on TV. Afro Soul Reaper says it's a hollow and everybody is shocked. It's a hollow with lots of smaller hollows clinging to it to form a base. They don't even really run a a bit here. They just kind of babble on a little bit and then split up. Cone is charging his hinge and bracelet like a phone in a wall charger. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) 
Tatsuki comes in. They talk a little bit about Ichigo's body, and we flash back to when she pounded Ichigo's face through a pane of glass. Good times. They pretend to have emotional and emotional moment, and then it ends with, Tatsuki is mad, so she will take this opportunity to hit things. Keigo is reading manga in the basement of Urahara's shop. They make fun of the Afro Soul Reaper, who is asleep. Keigo and Kone have a conversation about how Keigo was forcibly recruited by Urahara when he went to a Don Kanonji show. Keigo tried to get Mizuru involved, and Mizuru ditched him. <laughs> he, he managed to get Shizuru, though. Tessei interrupts them. They have to go do the plot now. Kone gets punched by Tatsuki when, he, when she shows up because he said that Tatsuki and Shizuru must have been using the bathroom before they showed up. I don't even really get why he, why he said that. Uh, because they said that they were picking flowers. And it was a bad cover for taking a shit. <laughs> uh, they all blast off to go do the filler. A bunch of hollows come out to attack them. Don Kanonji uses his little energy ball thing and it makes a big explosion. Ashida then appears in an aside and explains that Don Kanonji's exposed mustache enhances his combat abilities several fold. And Kone is indignant and says that sounds stupid. It's also wrong because the energy ball did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So Uru just goes and kills all the hollows herself. Remember when she was beating the shit out of an iron car? <laughs> you really didn't need anybody else. No, but uh, it's, it's way funnier if they were here, right? <laughs> Don K will stay with them as the other four go into the base. Hollows show up to stop them and Tatsuki fights them. Kone is stuck with Keigo and Shizuru and is like, can these two even fight? And Tessei tells him, Keigo has powers related to running away. And he literally <laughs> says... Chizuru has a secret power that will help you later. <laughs> <laughs> the secret ingredient is crime. <laughs> Tatsuki is really murdering the shit out of these hollows. And, and says, Kone, you go on alone. And the test is like, your beam will be strong enough to destroy the core of the hollow base. Then the bunny girl iron car shows up and attacks Tatsuki. And Chizuru sexually assaults her frame one. <laughs> Ishida pops up and literally says her suit makes her more of a sexual predator and enhances all her instincts, giving her multiple abilities they can't show on television. <laughs> Air Doctor, remove my everything in here. <laughs> <laughs> when she's turned on, she is faster than Sonido. <laughs> Which is really fucking good. We can now power scale her perviness. <laughs> She basically sex pests the villain into submission as Cone goes deeper into the base. Kago is being bothered by hollows and runs. Ishida explains that the suit lets him run faster. Afro Shell Soul Reaper shows up and he's using his Shikai, which is like a tambourine fused with a chakram. Yeah, it's a weird fucking thing. Right. It lets him control rocks, I guess, because he attacks them with rocks up from the ground. I forget if we ever see his thing canonically. Uh, we definitely I haven't don't seen it remember. before now. Yeah, not so far. So yeah. it'd be really funny if they read ahead again and like put it in. Right? It, it probably just shows up in some random joke panel eventually. Cone goes deeper in and finds the core. It's guarded by like a Metroid boss. Antics happen. We reuse footage from five minutes ago with of all the other rangers. <laughs> Don Kanoji now has a giant cartoon bazooka and is blowing hollows out of the sky outside. They, they give some emotionally stoic... I'm not emotionally stoic. They give some sappy emotional speech about generic speak of friendship, and then Cone uses the beam and destroys the core. The base starts to fall on the city, and Urahara effortlessly deletes it from reality. Everybody comes down and then falls asleep because this was 30 seconds before they teleported Karakura down to Soul Society. <laughs> Which, given the timeline, means all of Hueco Mundo happened in two days yes yeah yep that seems about right and that somehow was the most angering thing out of all of these episodes <laughs> <laughs> i mean i mean ichigo could have been gone a little while before this started anyway but also ichigo like nobody stopped and slept or ate so it must have happened really quickly yeah. right yeah and i i'm just living it's like someone lying to you about how long you've been in a sensory deprivation pit. <laughs> well, 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 remember, remember, Dan, all the filler arcs aren't real. A Shido isn't real. <laughs> you promise? <laughs> no, I think he's in one of the books. God damn it, come on. Because oh, Kubo did originally come up with him. God, <laughs> who's Ashido? Shido? 
pop. You it's the guy, the guy. You, you don't remember the, the epic the dude the who cave. lived in the underground yes, forest and lived in the, the cave? Hole. And I was worried it and, was and, him. And, <laughs> I didn't want to think about him. Think about how long ago that was, Bob. Remember when the iron car pointed at the screen? And it was really funny. <laughs> yes, I think about you know the beans posting <laughs> a lot. This dude eating beans. <laughs> The Soul Reaper eating beans. God. The Arankar Encyclopedia. Pesce will explain his sword, Ultima. It's made of light. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dodonchaka's body can store anything from Bawa Bawa to weapons. Gin shows up and asks what they're doing, and they say, We're explaining ourselves before the big showdown. And then Gin reveals they have no scenes in the big showdown. Tragic. But those were our episodes. Great. Thank you, Chris. Now we get to do our segments. And this time we actually ended both an ED and an OP. So we get to review those. Real quick, though. Yeah, what's up? I had a thought. Do you think... Because you know how AI is terrible at actually writing shit. Mm -hmm. Do you think if you trained an AI on enough bleach, it would have two directions? One of them is half of these episodes we watched, and the other direction is the other half? And you would just go, you really fucked up in two very different ways. I think it would just make mush that was unintelligible. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe at some better. point, well, maybe, 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 maybe once, maybe once we have consumed all real bleach content, I will ask Ch Chat GPT to provide fake summaries for fake bleach episodes. Yeah, and then we'll review five of those at a time. <laughs> oh my god! And then we'll slowly replace ourselves with AI voices of ourselves <laughs> talking about these fake episodes, and we'll see at what point. Did that, does it all break and we all stop moving and talking? <laughs> the aggro is just replaced with an AI that just makes the horrible speaker breaking sound that Brian did on that Family Guy AI generated stream. <laughs> oh. Aggro used to be so funny, but now he just destroys my speakers. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay, let's review these, these openings first. Or this, this opening, rather. This it's like, time, oh god, there's more than one? I didn't watch both. <laughs> right? Uh, it's opening nine, Valencia by Aqua Times. Excuse me, that's a name. Valencia is a name. That is Valonica, which is Veronica with an L. I'm sorry, Vel Valonica. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Still by Aqua Times, though. And this is a one to ten scale. So, Dr. Agro, what'd you think? I wanted to like this one more than I ended up doing. It's It's got some cool parts, and then it's got some other parts that seem to have nothing to do with the cool parts. <laughs> it, the, the, it seems to switch songs a couple of times in the middle of it, and uh, the visuals, I mean, there's a couple of interesting points, but really it's just the whole thing just kind of slides out of my brain. I would, I'd give it a five. Oof. Chris? What was your take on it? Um, I actually like this opening a lot. It reminds me a lot of the very first Bleach opening, where you got a lot of psychedelic colors and uh, it's shifting the the camera a lot to uh to different positions. Uh, and I think the songs. I don't know. This one really grew on me. I like a lot of. I like that. I like the dynamicness of the opening. I like it reminding me of the uh, the first Bleach opening and kind of how it's paced. So I'm gonna give this a nine. Whew. We had two very different answers there. I guess I'll go, uh, I'm kind of in the middle. Like, there's definitely parts of this one that I like, but it doesn't quite hit, like, those really good Bleach OPs. So I'm going to just let it sit around to seven. And that means you're up, Dan. <sighs> there's something egregious about we have found a way to cheat and only animate a third of our intro. Because you get <laughs> still frame, still frame, Looping animation of the two characters next to each other. Still frame, still frame, looping animation of the characters next to each other. And that just feels like you're cheating me. You stuffed this with wood pulp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't hate the song, though. I like various aspects of it more or less than the other aspects of it. I kind of am feeling the same thing Agro's feeling of. This is maybe two, maybe three songs. <laughs> uh and I, I'm a little frustrated by the visuals. Like, they could be cooler. It's definitely not as cool as it's been in the past. I'm going to go ahead and give it a six, which means we basically ran the whole gamut, but nobody gave it an eight. <laughs> because we went five, six, seven, nine. 
Oh my god, that means it comes in at the same exact score as the last opening. <laughs> Even and though that was six, ugh. seven, seven, seven. Jeez. Well, they're consistent, I guess. I guess. I guess. Uh, ignore the Matt one before. Says they are at least. Ignore the one before that. We gave a nine point two five. Well, the last, the last one in this one were consistent. <laughs> <laughs> and that means we can now review the ending, which is number eighteen. Sky Chord. Otona ni Naru Kimi E. <laughs> by Shion Suji. Shion. <laughs> I did not care for this. I don't think I like the song. I think the rotoscope uh, face for Orihime is terrible. Like every time they try and make her sing, it just looks real bad. No, it's cool. What if she was 15 years older for one shot? It's, it's rough. I did like the bridge. The bridge with everyone walking around in the background looked nice. It's neat artistically. Mm-hmm. It has vibes. And I enjoyed seeing these still shots they made of all the uh, the captains in the olden times, but it still doesn't doesn't save it. I'm giving it a four. Chris, what did you think? Yeah, this kind of reminded me of like this kind of reminded me of the very first Bleach ED. Nobody knows, knows who I really, I really am. Really am. Mm. Man, Edgar needs to watch that about a 400 times to get it ingrained into his psyche. God, I'd forgotten about that. Oh. We gotta go back. But it, it's like a slightly better, but somehow more bur boring version of that. I, I like the stuff like uh, Orihime on the swing, but I'm still only going to give it a four. Dan? Oh, no. I'm also giving it a four. <laughs> I don't hate it aggressively. Let me be clear. Okay. But it is not good. <laughs> it's just, there's a, uh, that uh, Orihime animated face moment has bugged me the whole time. I've hated it every time I've seen it. The bridge is the cool shot. Mm -hmm. It has nice vibes. It's neat. I don't, I don't think I actually like any other part of this outro. It doesn't have <laughs> the cool, cozy vibes of alternate. Like, you, you know, some EDs have had like a street, uh, and I think OPs too, uh, have like captains and lieutenants in street clothes. Yeah. Uh, this is them in, you know, Karakura or some other part of Japan. Like, isn't that neat? Oh, look, he's wearing a, he's wearing a scarf. Isn't that spiffy? This doesn't. This doesn't have that. No. It doesn't have anything for me. I don't I don't like it. I'm giving it a four. All right. Dr. Agro. Okay, so so this is this is gonna be a little weird, but maybe not in the way you think. Okay. Uh I did not like the bridge. Uh it's the kind of thing that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. But it's its implementation here felt soulless and flat. And I am an absolute sucker for characters oh, being animated fucker. singing one word or line. <laughs> you motherfucker. I skipped this ED almost every time except for that Zuto. <laughs> oh and that brings it all the way up to a five for me. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Meteoric rise. <laughs> as it goes from a four average to a 4.25. <laughs> Nothing can ever match up to this. I uh that's 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 fantastic, Agro. I'm glad that you know Bob and I here we like Oreos. Uh, we, we're like it's good. The cream's nice. I I I you know only a little cream. And you're like I wanted a package of Oreos. That's nothing but nothing maximum but stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put the thins on the sides of the stuff? Oh God. <laughs> Man, the, the meg the most stuff Oreos are already so grotesque. You're right. <laughs> I would like a tennis ball sized dollop of cream lightly dusted with Oreo crumbs. Good lord. I will simply insert it into my mouth and let the body warmth and saliva do its job. <laughs> Pass out in a diabetic coma immediately. <laughs> <sighs> Hmm. I don't know. I'd kind of rather eat that than deal with these ETs and OPs for another <laughs> set of episodes. Uh, I need to slowly swallow a continuous tube of Oreo cream until it entirely <laughs> fills my system, and then I am truly the stuffed one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait. So, are you the 
are you a cookie at that point? What is like the, the definition of cookies weird? Somebody, some motherfucker in the comments is going to be like, no, he's a sandwich. And I'm going to be like, you're getting banned. <laughs> I'll ban I think you. that makes me a cream burrito. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a phrase I never wanted to hear in my life. Yeah, let's move on to best dressed. <laughs> Sounds good. Chris, who was the best dressed in these episodes? Shinji when he was melting. <laughs> 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 Somebody said, I bet you can't do the milk challenge, but with glue. <laughs> <laughs> Dan? The purple haired girl with the chain! Yeah, of course. Of course! Like, I don't think we, I, I was like, let's just get this out of the way. It's so good! <laughs> That's a great design! Why am I watching these fucking chuckle fuck visors and their shitty backstory instead of that? <laughs> Man, you could have told this story in a really cool way in three episodes. Yeah. You could have. How many was that? Twelve? No, that was like six. You sure? Maybe eight. It was... It wasn't a full twelve. <sighs> it's so long in the last three episodes of this... this yeah, the last part, three were absolutely pointless. It was so fucking... Come on now. But anyway, yeah, no, her... She's delightful. She's great. Mm -hmm. It's like if you took that one character from Soccer Wars with the purple hair <laughs> and then put put a chain link, like it, the, the chain <laughs> and the hair. It's important. It's, it's pretty cool. It's a neat it, idea. Then, then she has a ponytail somehow coming out of the end of the chain. It, it's confusing. It's so but... cool. It's so cool. She's so strong. <laughs> Do you think if you yank the hair, it makes like a chainsaw sound? <laughs> like I'm trying to figure <laughs> out, like. You don't put the hair at the end unless it's like supposed to do something, right? I mean, yeah, it, uh, she's in the the science core. It probably does something. I bet if Osaka daydreamed, we could figure out exactly what it does. <laughs> Just like Geo Chan's hair. Doctor Agro, who is the best dressed? Uh, obviously, Karakurizer Spirit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I love the rest serious. of the team and their their bargain bin science ninja team getups, but. Don Kanonji shows up like he just stepped out of the Stonewall riots. Like, this guy was hucking bricks at cops last night. <laughs> Holy shit. He, he does, it is a really gay outfit. Mm -hmm. It is powerful. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to have to give it to Karakurizer Beast because we don't have enough Toski outfits. That's true. We just don't. Yeah. Wisdom. And that's all I gotta say. We can move on. <laughs> I, I actually really like uh, Cone's Karakurizer oh, yeah, outfit. No, I think it's great. I love how Gotcha Man that kind of mm -hmm. looks. Mm -hmm. It's real neat. I, I really appreciate it. I enjoyed those two episodes. I, I'm being sincere when I say I enjoyed those two episodes so much more than most of the recent Bleach we've watched. <laughs> oh, yeah. This this is what filler should be. Right. Once in a while, Fleetcha lets hit a really good filler episode. It's crazy. Like, remember that one with Ikaku t teaching Kendo? Yes. That was yeah. incredible. I think back to that stretch over and over again. And it's often, it's very funny because this is technically canon. Like, the it does loop directly and seamlessly back into the real plot in a way you don't, like, most of this filler really doesn't. Yeah, no. That's we, weird. We just endured an entire filler arc that could never have happened. Right! <laughs> and then two episodes based on it that never could have happened. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, all these characters have good designs, like Tiny Devil, the... Uh, God, I'm blanking on her name now. Uh, yeah, Uru. Uru -du. Uru, yeah, that like that's good, that's good outfit. Oh yeah, no, she, I love that she has the kitty paws or the bear paws on her feet. That's funny as shit, right? She was kicking so strong in the uh, the made up iron car was good, like that weird little bunny hat. Yes, like hilarious. I, strangely good designs this episode. Yeah, no, these were great. If all of bleach filler was this good, we'd be doing all right, right? I'm so mortified for the next thing of Bleach Filler. Because uh -huh. we, we just to be clear, we are out now, right? And the next episode of Chuggy Bleach is about real bleach. Yes, right? we're back to real bleach next episode. Okay, that's... Thank God. All right, Dan. Mm. Knowing that, how excited are you on I, a scale of 1 to 10? I am actually very excited. The Visards ended the Visard flashback arc with them just being like ready to whip ass mm -hmm. as they're just leaving the garage they've been sitting in the entire time. The fucking last year of my life has been passing away. <laughs> they've been sitting in that garage since the beginning of time, basically. Since, the intro, since Bleach started, they've been in that garage. Seemingly, yeah. They built that garage around those guys. 
Yeah, where's the fucking flashback where they explain where these what these motherfuckers have been doing for a hundred and ten years? Because yeah. it certainly wasn't saving Orihime's mom. <laughs> <laughs> certainly wasn't saving Ichigo's mom. These guys hate moms. <laughs> you fucking mom haters, kill yourself! And it's like an angry mom. <laughs> Shinji's like, they're not single, so I don't care. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> pretty, pretty on brand. Um, you know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to say a 10. All right. I am very excited to watch Cannon Bleach where the visors are back because I spent a lot of fucking Hoiko Mondo being like, yo, you remember the whole cast of characters you keep showing in the intro that are doing nothing and haven't in a year? Yeah, it's almost like Kubo's insanely bad at writing multiple things happening at once. He just, you know, <laughs> some people get too excited about uh, costumes. He gets too excited about character creation. <laughs> Way too excited. All right, Chris, did you bring any insane trivia this week? That bunny girl Aaron Carr has a name. True or false? <sighs> Dan. False. Bob. I've got to bet on true. Aggro. I can't believe they'd be lazy enough to not. Uh, Drew has a name. This character in the Bleach Wiki is titled Unnamed Female yes! Iron Car. Oh Nailed God. it! Come on. How? <laughs> How do you turn in the character design sheet and not just write some shit on it? Yeah, just have some of any, any number of bunny puns. It's easy. Oh, yeah, I, I wanted to say before this episode's over, uh, I brought this point up to you, Bob. I don't know how the other two feel about it. Uh, so Uruhara shows up late to that captain's meeting, uh -huh. which is a little weird when you think about it, because it's like, how did he get there late if they all got the news? But he anyway, ignoring that, they build a trend in this in this flashback art that Uruhara is just late to things. And that kind of upsets me as someone who's always late to everything as I'm like, no, I always took it as Urahar is too cool for Soul Society, not he was bad at his job and. <laughs> I was like, oh man, come on. This dude's always waking up late. <laughs> what you gonna do, man? That's tragic. That's tragic. All right, we got we gotta review these episodes. Using our patented tightness scale of zero to twenty-five. Together, that forms a maximum of 100 points. That's a lot of points. I figured maybe I should not. explain that for someone who can't do math. <laughs> Might be a core part of our fan base. I don't know. <laughs> Chris, how tight was this? This was a really poorly paced flashback. I feel like maybe if it had been three episodes instead of five, it would have helped. But the filler episodes were funny, so I'm going to give it a 13. Dan? <sighs> It is really hard. It's uh, two very contrasting things. You know, the filler episodes are really good bleach and like the Karakurizer, right? Uh -huh. And then the other part is like really painful bleach because of how much of it was recap um, and so thin. Right. It's actually all, all where you know, all you already know going in basically no matter what. <sighs> yeah, this is a really difficult number to nail down because of that. Because my feelings towards the last two episodes are really strong, and my feelings towards the last, uh, the first three episodes are also equally other str strong in the other direction. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna have to split the difference here. I'm giving it a twelve. That means it's my turn. Uh, yeah, it. This really is like the worst way to do a flashback, and that's so much of this. It's three episodes straight that feel completely pointless. We don't even really build out any of these characters more than before we get to see a little bit of them being turned into the uh visors for the first time which is kind of neat but not really and it's a super frustrating fight as no one can even shikai so yeah even though those last two episodes are fun i'm gonna give this like a nine because it's it's rough it is rough watching these first three episodes dr agro don kanonji is back Urahara is running a <laughs> Saw game themed after Battle of the Planets. I don't even remember the first three episodes. 20. 
Man, that's fair. I wish I could forget the first three episodes. <laughs> well, uh, just like with the with the reviewing of that ED, I believe, or the OP, uh, the, the numbers are a much wider range this time, but somehow the exact same as the prior set of episodes. Uh, 13.5 average score, 54 total. Great. Damn. Great. Do you think Kanakonizer will ever come back? I hope, but I don't think so. But uh, I want to believe that he they just go into that in the middle of that next filler arc we go into because I have no <laughs> idea what's in there. I'm so scared. But at least that's a far a decent ways off, right? Yeah, definitely, Bob. Sure, Bob, you're crying. <laughs> There's definitely not a filler arc in what one ep- one more episode. What? No. <laughs> no. Okay, everyone. We're sh- we're shifting dynamics. the The podcast's going to work in a very different way. We are watching fourteen episodes next time, which means after that it is filler town. No, and then we're watching all of that filler at once. Oh my god, that might be medically unsound. Yeah, we might look, audience. If it, there is a month long delay before an episode, you know why. <laughs> you know what happened. <laughs> if we're alive right (laughs) they didn't stream friday either weird (laughs) jesus (laughs) cause of death chugging bleach (laughs) (laughs) oh it's one of those titles you know where the title makes sense once you get far enough in it right yeah that was the reveal moment after years yeah it's finally here want to know the name chugging bleach Now hand him that surfboard. (laughs) Hey, before you down that jug of bleach, how about you head on over to patreon.com slash GB podcast. You can get the next episode of Chugging Bleach early and help support us doing insane seven year long endeavors like watching all of Bleach. We also do many other shows that you can get extras for. And if you ascend to Vasto Pod Lourdes, you'll even get credit for it on Big Think Dimension, our weekly gaming podcast. If not, that's fine. We'll see you next time you're thirsty for some bleach. The executive producers for this Gigaboots video are Esme, Ely Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Redblaze27, Brendan O'Sullivan, A Reminder for Symphony of War, Cooper Tank, very best plot iconic bane and rado thank you very much to our executive producers and also these guys if you want to become an executive producer or normal patron head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today